Step one, um, you select your input sources, um, you can go over those with your team leaders, looking at your SMART goals, and um, Scott was talking about will help you sort of focus in on the kinds of information that you should be looking for. So um, the other good thing to look at while we're talking about this is, I think you handed out the green paper, which is the actual, which is the actual content landscape across the top. Our input sources, so suggestions for the types of things to look at for information. So not only um, some of you are more likely than others to actually get information about your teams <laughs> and what your teams are doing about um, you know they're making progress on a particular objective. Um, I think of one. So like the water team is responsible for implementing a seat back to tap plan, and you know from time to time we hit milestones like we get. Um, own an online or an inline water cooler system of those five gallon carboy water system and say, I think the same kind of thing, but if you can pump it into the tap so you're not having to have the big bottles of water. Um, we got a preferred vendor set up on eShop and we would funnel that to Shirley, who's the water team um, blogger, and she would do a post and off it would go. Um, but there might not be weekly news from your team like that, so it's fine to look at broader sources for information. Various blogs or I mean, we'll talk about this a bit later on and brainstorm about that. So first order of business is figure out which sources you you will, will be monitoring for information related to your to your team. That makes sense more or less. Right? Um, second step, so you're monitoring uh, these sources and you will identify something to black about. Um, and then uh, you should probably review those topics with your team leaders for team references. I think some of the team leaders are really going to let you be pretty independent and not feel like they need a whole lot of review about um, the things that you're blogging about. And some others may be more interested and more involved and you want to help you select topics that they feel are related to what the team is doing or appropriate. So we're leaving that to you to meet um, with your teams to talk about um, what level and what process they want to use. I imagine most of your team leaders are going to want to work permanently through email or phone calls or a face-to-face -face meeting at least once, I think, initially. would be a good, a good strategy. I know that some of you have done that already. Um, that questions about that or concerns? Uh, so the next step is to create your blog post. And we're hoping for one post a week. Um, after you create your blog post, the, in our office, it came to the sustainability office, the CSO, the um, moderator, who most of the time is Dan Roth. He's the associate director for sustainability. He's not around. Tells to me as his backup, we'll just review your post and um, publish it. So there's just that one, one step of he may ask you to do some editing or he may just publish it. We have an intern in our office. Ashley, she's her early when she's coming to class. And she's the one who actually um, will repost your post to Facebook and Twitter. So that step of um, getting it on the website and getting it up onto the same campus social media sources happens in our office. Need to worry about that. So once we do that, um, this is where you guys come back in on the, the follow up piece to comment and converse about the post online. And someone somewhere along the way asked me a question or they were, they were concerned about um, having the expertise or the knowledge to respond to comments or questions, then you should by all means um, reach out to your team for, for help with things are just out of your, out of your scope. And don't worry too much about, you know, qualifications and, and things like that. Right, well, you're entitled to your opinions no matter what. <laughs> and, yeah. and the other thing is when you respond to a post, you're responding as yourself, not necessarily as sustainability for now. Or correct. So, you know, That's it's correct. a it's a personal viewpoint that you're you're um, that you're sharing. Yeah, so you never need to be right. <laughs> or wrong. Right. Uh, <coughs> so um, this is what I just said in the form of a flow chart. Um, I think I handed those out this point. <laughs> so, just to recap, um, it's really relatively straightforward. Across the top, we've got five um, roles. So, interns are the first column all the way to the right. Um, team liaison, 
most of the time those are the team leaders. There's a few cases where it's not the team leader who's going to be um, the main liaison on the team for the interns. So the CSM moderator, our news intern, and then the publisher. That's actually Lisa <laughs> at this point. So just run through the process one more time um, and jump in with questions if it makes sense. Top, you have to figure out which sources you'd like to monitor um, when you start monitoring your sources. And if you look over to the last two columns, you'll see that the, uh, our news intern is monitoring um, the Cornell news publications, and that Lisa is monitoring local news publications. So what they are doing is not, um, they are just re reposting the news story as if they're not um, making commentary or blogging or creating any new content. So um, the C papers and the, the local paper in terms of just happening on news or the campus sustainability stuff done by Also, a little bubble for your team liaison. Hopefully, they will send you um, team related news. As we talked about a lot of these and interviewed, the teams all have very different personalities, so that they're not going to be coming and sending you information. So, as I can see, probably have to reach out to if you had anything this week. So, you send uh, them for whatever agreement you guys come to, and then you create posts. Um, posts feed into Dan, the moderator, who you can use publish the thing, um, and use intern, post them to Facebook and Twitter. You guys comment uh, both on the website blog, and we'll get that in a minute. And um, comment and share on Facebook and Twitter. And everyone on your team, hopefully, will get into the same things and get involved online. And then, that's been at least Lisa takes all the blog posts and we summarize them in that um, news class, the email news class, I think mm -hmm. some of you may not get. Goes out the email. The long lines of, we, we know from focus groups that students like social media, staff like email, faculty would prefer a newspaper. So we hope to uh, get your blogs out um, to as many places as possible. Does that make sense? A lot of. Um, what I've noticed is a lot of uh, entities that are groups, like you know, an like organization or whatever, who might continue to share what you're doing, they might they might prefer the news blast, you know, in terms of like uh, how they receive information. Okay. Yeah. And just things that are made up of groups. People, yeah. they usually go for the digest. You know? Right. Yeah. Versus. And you might consider the Cornell Health Bowl, which I highly call that allows you to produce a customized set of communications as you allows you to do it right on the website. I think Leslie can yeah. speak more to it. So would you like me to do that now or later? Well whatever works with okay. the <laughs> <laughs> one minute. Okay. Um, the Cornell now twenty sixteen is the website where um, we are forwarding the campaign for Cornell, fundraising campaign. But it includes a number of cells uh, where rich content is provided about things like sustainability, diversity, public engagement, the internationalization of Cornell. You can take the information that's in those cells, which is coming in by RSS feeds, and create your own mini newsletter on the topic, say, sustainability, um, and then distribute that to your own email list. I have, there is a new technique that's coming a little bit further down the line um, that will actually, um, I'll be offering to Lisa um, to replace her sustainability news class that will be completely Cornell branded but without the fundraising part. <laughs> and that's only a couple months away. Awesome. Yeah, yeah is, cool. Is Cornell now being updated automatically based on RSS feeds out here? No, the curators update it. It's, it is. But it's a, uh, it, it's well, a, a, a combination of the RSS feeds that come from uh, other news sources and then uh, curators update information. Curators still have to select what's coming in by their RSS feeds as opposed to their individual page. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm just going to take a couple minutes to a little more detail about what's a blog book. I was trying to write a blog example for today. It's a lot harder than I expected. <laughs> 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 Maybe that's just me. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so I, after, the, after the first one was definitely a hard one. 
Okay. But so what's we'll to talk about um, really pretty much anything that related to your team's focus. Yeah, but we want to see what you look. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 so, um, all right. Yeah, I talk to these guys and talk to Hal and Gonzalez and they say, you know, just tie it to what's happening um, or not happening, it should be happening at Cornell and give it a little bit of a personal touch. Um, harder than it sounds, but you guys totally can't be more way ahead of me. So, um, you can uh, create new content as a, you know, as a journalist. You don't have to repost what other people are talking about. You know, um, see something happening on campus, take a picture, take a little video, um, write a little commentary, make a meme. Believe it or not, uh, Lisa made this. Not uh, believe it or not, but Lisa made this. Oh, Lisa yeah. made this meme, and believe it or not, my it's first it's and only meme. It's the most popular thing ever to hit our Facebook <laughs> page. So they are, you know, they're they're really popular, and it's you know, you get people looking at uh, a meme and then you know, say something comment or they're great we're out there um, so and op those have also been we put a couple of those out in the blog recently and they've been really popular more popular than real news um, so <laughs> things that are happening with your team events calls to action um, things like I just learned this um, the water you use in the average 10 minute shower 43 gallons enough for the average African family for a week so just like uh, just really Meaningful stuff like that. Um, and if you create it, you know, you're the author, so put by, you know, where you are and take the credit and shoot your horn. Another good place to go commentary on existing content. So that's actually what my example is. Um, I found an article that I thought was really important and I thought people should really know about, and I tried to um, tie it into what's happening at Cornell and Sermon and Judge. In that case, make sure you give credit to regional sources and that's going back. We don't, don't get in trouble. Um, some other ideas, um, and maybe we're going to practice on you know, a little bit, hurry up. Um, you can look at your team landing page or pick an initiative related to your team. Find something kind of, I don't know, provocative or unusual or interesting about it. Um, a blog post about that, you know, find a link back to Echo page on the website. So our, you know, how many um, initiatives on there that are great, great fodder for blog posts. Um, Real quick thing on the, the commentary and existing content. When you make a post that comments on other articles and things and, and gives credit to it, a lot of times, you know, the, the people who originally created that content look for that and mm -hmm. will then say, hey, thanks for the shout out, or mm -hmm. will actually respond to your commentary on it or your opinion on it. So it's a really great way, again, to get people enrolled into uh, what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't know, I'm always excited when I put in a picture on my own Facebook site. I'm like, oh, right, Facebook. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, let's see, some other suggestions I've been hearing are, um, uh, like some sort of expose type of a post on someone, um, you know, not that it's bad, but I just got somebody doing this really great sustainable act, and, you know, that could be, could be something interesting. Um, tie things back to your hometown. I've got an example about that to show you. Bring in ideas you think other people would like to hear. Ideas? Okay, so just um, a, just like a you know uh, a rundown of like we just had this event. You know, all these really cool things happened. Yeah. You know, just a recap. Kind yeah. Of thing. yeah. Yeah. I'll keep that right here. We're leaving. Okay, so I also handed out. I think most of you got a copy of this, like five pages of blog instructions. Those look kind of scary. It's actually really easy. Um, but I know there are people like me who like a lot of detail. <laughs> so there's, there's like maybe four main steps to making a blog post in our content management system. But then uh, we also list it out as you know as we've been creating these and like oh you know good to know this. <laughs> so I, I included all that in the back, but the first page is really right now. But I'm just gonna run through it. I'm gonna show you an example and I'm gonna turn it into hopefully create your own. So yeah. um, right. So the first step is to go to the blog. <laughs> Then you log in. There's a um, there's a screenshot in your instructions. You have to click that says use my net ID. And you my net ID. Oh, and I should also mention that the um, those detailed instructions that I handed out are available on the um, CMS dashboard, as well as the content kind of landscape, as well as the guidelines, as well as the flowchart. Maybe you could show that after this. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Don't 